Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have an example with a slightly different twist. We're given this vector field, and as we saw in the previous video, this is indeed a conservative vector field, and therefore the curl of the vector field is equal to zero. Now, assuming that's the case, they want us to find another function, not a vector function, but a scalar function of the variables x, y, and z, such that the vector field that we have here is equal to the gradient of that function. So let's define what we mean again with the gradient of the function. The gradient of the function f is equal to i times the partial of f with respect to x plus j, the partial of f with respect to y plus k times the partial of f with respect to z. And notice now that this has the same format as our vector function, which means that this should equal that, this should equal that, and this should equal that. So we can say then that from that, therefore, the partial of f with respect to x is equal to y squared z cubed. The partial of the function with respect to y is equal to 2xyz cubed, 2xyz cubed, and the partial of the function with respect to z should be able should be equal to 3xy squared z squared. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this here and integrate it only relative to the variable x. So we're going to integrate it with only the variable x of y squared z cubed and when we do that this will be equal to x y squared z cubed and of course we need a dx in there to be technically correct but that means we could still have a function let's call it g of the variables y and z because that can pop up if we take the derivative of this with respect to x this disappears so we should account for the possibility of that existing what this means is that this is a possible form of the function. So we have a known part, x, y squared, z cubed, but we have an unknown part, another function, only of the variables y and z. And we don't know yet what that is. But we do know that if we assume this to be the function we're looking for, and now we take the partial derivative of that function with respect to y, we should get this quantity right here, regardless of what this value is here. So let's try that. So we're going to take the partial with respect to y of what we just found, which is x y squared z cubed plus some function of y and z. And if we do that, we get, let's see here, we get 2xyz cubed plus the derivative g with respect to y, and I'll write it like this, g with respect to y of y and z. And that has to equal this quantity right here because we know that the partial derivative of the function with respect to y gives us this quantity right here. So this should be equal to 2xyz cubed. And notice, since this is equal to that, from that we can conclude that the extra function here, g of y and z, and the derivative with respect to y, is equal to zero. So there is no function of y and z. When we integrate that, we just get a constant. So what this means now is if we integrate this with respect to z, we could still end up with a function of z. So that means we still have one more function that's possible. So let's call it h, which is a function of the variable z only which means that we cannot conclude that the function cannot be any more than x y squared z cubed plus a possible function of the variable z only. So now this is no longer a possibility. This is now our next possibility for the function that we're looking for. So next I'm going to take what I believe the function could be take the derivative with respect to z, and then compare it to this quantity right there. So let's go ahead and do that. So the partial with respect to z of 
x y squared z cubed plus some possible function of z and that is going to be equal to when we take the derivative here we get 3 x y squared z squared and plus the derivative with respect to z of this unknown function of z and then I'm going to compare that to my value up here which is equal to 3xy squared z squared and notice since this is exactly the same as this this here of course this is h prime so to speak h prime the derivative of h with respect to z that must be equal to zero so therefore h with respect to z is equal to zero and therefore h which is equal to h as a function of z must be equal to a constant so let's just write it so this must be equal to a constant only which means that if this is a constant then the function I'm looking for f is equal to x y squared z cubed plus a constant and that means that if I take this function now to show that we've got the right function and I take the partial with, the, with respect to x I will get this quantity right here I'll take this I take the derivative of this with respect to y I will get this and if I take this and I take the derivative with respect to z I will get that and so ultimately what we found was we found the function such that when I take the gradient of the function I get my initial vector field back and that's how it's done